everybody, Sean from ShawneeFood.com. Hey man, on this show we talk about food that you can make for yourself, your family, and of course we never forget our friends. Well, today we're making something that you asked for. Of course, that is braised beef on polenta. Oh yes, it is coming up next. All right, we're here at the ingredients table once again. Let's take a look and see what we have here. Now, first off starting, we've got some fresh ingredients from the shiny food garden here. Nice fresh basil, look at this. It's wonderful, giant leaves we're gonna be using here. Good stuff. Some sage, some oregano, some thyme, and we're gonna use some beef stock on this. Definitely gonna help it along. Fresh Roma tomatoes from the garden, and we're gonna use Bella Grace, olive oil, of course, once again, this is garlic infused, good stuff. You'll have that at the bottom of the show, so you can go check that out. There's a link to that. Um, we're gonna use a little bit of honey on this, probably about an ounce. The reason why I'm going to use this is because it's going to help offset this acidity from these tomatoes, so it makes a nice balance. So it works real well, I've done that before. I'm going to use white pearl onions. I have used a yellow onion before, you can use either or, but I'm using a white pearl onions this time. One six ounce can of tomato paste. And of course, this is going to be sitting on some polenta. We'll get to that a little bit later. We're gonna have two stalks of celery, one large carrot, four garlic cloves, some green peppercorn, black pepper, and some sea salt. Also some Renato Barbera, which is a great wine. Nice deep red we're going to be putting into the pot as soon as we get done searing the short ribs. Let's go take a look at the star of the show. Come on. Check it out. Look at this, USDA Prime spare ribs. These are gorgeous. Look at the marbling in them, just perfect. So we're gonna put some salt on those and some pepper, of course. We'll flip them over on the other side and do the same thing to that before we put those into our pan. And here we have the Dutch oven. Cast iron, heavy duty, been around for many years, really around the 600, 700 AD. Didn't always really look like this, looked more like a kettle. You could use this thing to cook anywhere, inside, outside, obviously, a Dutch oven in your oven. It works great. Before you put your short ribs in there, you wanna get it real hot, put a little olive oil in there, and you can see how hot that pan is. And now we're gonna place our short ribs in there and brown them on both sides and start to build our recipe. Okay, so our short ribs are browning. Let's go over and take a look at our cutting board and see what kind of vegetables we're using. Of course, we've got some celery here that we're gonna just do some rough cuts, nothing fancy. And of course, our carrots. And we're gonna follow it up with some nice wedge tomatoes. And by adding all of these to our pan, this is gonna give us that nice, fresh stock that we're going to build. Okay, we're gonna use some nice white pearl onions. And the way you wanna be able to remove the skins from those, you will cut off the one end where the root is, and you wanna boil those in water for about 13 seconds. We'll remove those, put those in some nice ice water to stop the cooking process. Mix that around, and we'll remove those, and that skin should just pop right off there. Okay, meanwhile, back at the Dutch oven, we are going to turn our short ribs, and they are getting nice and browned, just the way we like them. And we're gonna add our thyme, our sage, our basil, uh, all of our good spices together, but we want to use like a little piece of twine or string to keep those all together, and we'll, we'll put those in with our short ribs. Pretty easy to do, you just tie it in, continue to twirl it around 
and tie it off on the end. It doesn't have to be really neat or anything, just as long as it's holding them together. And the rosemary in there too, I put some rosemary in there. Don't forget we are going to add our bay leaves and our garlic also. Okay, this time we're gonna add our two cups of bone broth and our one cup of red wine. And we are on our way. Now it's time to add one can of tomato paste. All right, it is time to add our vegetables. Hey, are you ready? Okay, let's put this Dutch oven and braised beef into the oven. Remember, two and a half hours, right? Okay, let's go. Hey, all right. Well, we're in the oven, huh? We got some time to wait. Um, what you wanna do though, is make sure that you check that about every hour. Make sure that you have enough moisture in there because if you don't, that could evaporate and get down. You don't want the meat to dry out. So if you do need to add some, some stock to it, or um, last time I made it, I used vegetable stock, but this time I used beef stock. The beef stock, I think, works better. It's more flavorful. But even if you added some water, just make sure that you have enough moisture in there and it doesn't dry out, okay? So when this gets done, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove the short ribs. And so all we're gonna be left with is the vegetables, the onions and stuff, the carrots and stuff that you saw was in there. Okay, so I wanna make some kind of a sauce. Okay, I don't want it to be just all liquidy because remember this is gonna go on top of polenta, okay? So, how are we going to strain that? We could use it in a food processor, we could do that, but there's a thing called the vegetable mill. I don't know if you're aware of that, but it's pretty cool. It looks like this, okay? And what I'm gonna do is I am going to put all the leftover vegetables in here. You saw the ends of the celery stalk and all that stuff. Any unwanted stuff that's in there, I'm gonna turn this. It almost looks like a prop, like on a, on a boat. And as, as I go around back and forth, it's going to move this through those perforated holes, okay? And it's gonna make a nice, uh, thick uh, type of sauce that we're gonna go with our stock. It's, it's great, I've used it before and it works great. So a vegetable meal, if you can get one of those. You might have to go to a restaurant supply house to get one of these, but you don't have to use one. Uh, you could use a, a Vitamix blender or a food processor, but I mean, that's the legit way to do it. So vegetable meal. So we're gonna be back in a bit. I'll see you then, okay? All right. Oh, it looks like time's up. Let's check it out. Oh, oh my God, look at that. I'm so hungry. Delish. Now we're gonna remove our short ribs and put those aside and you can see the foil that I have there. And then we're gonna run our vegetables through. There is the vegetable mill. Also, what I'll do is after I pour some of that stock back in, I'm going to trim off some of the fat with a spoon. So I wanna keep doing that. So uh, it, it, try to make it as lean as possible. Look at that. That is all vegetables right there. That is wonderful. Add a little bit of bones back in there for some more flavor. And we'll add a little bit of our stock back into it. And then we'll let that continue to reduce down. And of course I'm gonna take the spoon and continue to skim the top for a little bit of fat. But remember, that's what's gonna give that flavor to all our vegetables, making a great sauce. All right. As you can see, the longer we cook this thing, the thicker it gets. It's reducing down. It's getting right where we want it. Let's add our short ribs back in, and we're just about ready. Of course.
course, our polenta is coming up right around the corner. All right, it's time to make some polenta. Now, you know, I know that some of you might be thinking, eh, it's a little intimidating making polenta, uh, or you've made it before and it came out mushy or gummy, but it's really not that hard to do. You definitely got, got to take the time. It takes about 25 minutes to make that. So you just follow the directions and you should be fine. For what I'm doing here, I'm using uh, a cup of polenta and two cups of water. We're gonna have a little bit of butter in there, a little bit of salt, and we're gonna continue to stir. We're gonna get it add, once this water gets boiling, we're gonna slowly add the polenta into it and continue to stir. And it will continue to get thickened up. And so if it gets too thick, not a problem. If we have to put it aside, put it aside we can always add a little bit of water and to, to thin it up. So once I get the initial uh, cooking going on this, I am going to put this into a double boiler and just kind of set that aside and then I can use it when I need to use it. So it's really not hard to do and I know you guys can do it, okay? All right, we're gonna do that right now. Let's go. Okay, we've got our water boiling now. We're slowly adding our polenta and you're just gonna to continue to stir it from the cork. Like I always say, you want to have yourself your favorite beverage while you're standing over your food, making it the best it can be. We add a little butter to that, a little bit of salt to that, and it thickens. Then we're gonna put that aside into our double boiler and away we go. Okay, here we are. It is the moment of truth, the braised beef. Let's see how we do on polenta. Oh, it's been cooking, remember, two and a half hours. I tell you, the wine, all of the vegetables that I used and that vegetable mill, it all paid off. If this is your first time checking the show out, I uh, certainly appreciate you subscribing and uh, ring the bell of course you'll be notified for new shows that are coming up braised beef i know you guys wanted this i love it and i hope you love it too and until next time i look forward to seeing you then and thanks so much see ya yum huh it is delicious polenta hmm okay well hey we're gonna sear those Okay, we're gonna sear those ribs right. God damn it! I know.